Lancashire Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. As always, with Jose Neuer, Ryan Boniface. How are we doing this week, guys? Good. And I'm going to ask how you are this week, so I don't oh, get bullied for not doing it. Joe. Well done, well done. I'm very good as well. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, thank you, everyone out there listening, supporting us. Obviously, catch us on YouTube if you don't already, across all podcast platforms. Follow us on Twitter at listen to I N, listen T O I N. And of course, you can catch us as we record live every single Tuesday, give or take, round about six o'clock. Just follow Joe on TikTok, J Neuer underscore Inspiration Nation. That's all my admin. Thank you again, everyone who is right now joining on TikTok. If you've got any questions, you want to join in the show as we're going, just let us know. Anyone out there you want to be involved, that is where to follow us. You can also put questions and comments on Twitter as well, and we will pick up on them there. So, the um, the badge of conversation. We had a, we've had a stick, we've had a wheel, we've had a baton. We're now onto the badge. Who is wearing the badge of conversation today? I think that's me today. It is you, Joe. It is you. That's just want to it really give a annoys me. Elf. We do this badge, but you know who it is every week. He does, yeah, every week. I can't. The badge, it, the wheel. Honestly, it 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 rattles me. I love you guys too. <laughs> then we Good. have to do it every week. Does it? That's what Lee's gonna do. You've done it now. Yeah. It. The, more, the more people don't like things, tends to gear me up to do it more and more and more. Yeah. yeah. It's the what, to... what? What? What was the other one? Awesome sort of awesome source. That's been in the group oh, that's chat brilliant. A few that's times. mine. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a picture of it on like a ketchup, but no, no, no. no I love that. Sorry, you go. There um, are people right now who want to know what we're talking about and are thinking, "I'm fed up with this tripe." Let's go and listen to something else. So, before we lose and Joe, what is the conversation? Yeah, the conversation. Before I say that, it's Alfie Prosser. Welcome back to the live. I'm just going to say that because um, I've just seen you there. So brilliant. And thanks for liking away. It's brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you so, so much. Um, so the, the bat, the, what is it? Not the bat in the conversation. The badge uh, of conversation. The badge, the badge today, this week. You're wearing the badge. The badge. So the badge of conversation is, we, I, want, I want to discuss a question. The question is, why do people not like being told what to do? That's what it's about. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to you. I'm just going to start you. Right, what, why do you think? So this is a real personal thing. So I think of taking it from a personal perspective. Do you like being told what to do? And do you feel any resistance about being told what to do? And why is that? Over to you guys. Depends on the um, the context, I guess. They were the exact words I was going to use as well, Grifter. Exact words. Okay. So what so, be the right, context? Give, so, give us two different contexts. So so you, I want to you, let me know. In what in what way would you accept? Say I, I'm okay being told what to do, and what context you wouldn't accept being told what to do. Like you got a problem, right? Or you know, or, or something's happened, and you think, "Yep, yeah, okay, I've listened to." It. But and there's all there's been times where you've been told and you didn't like it, and you didn't do it. Or there's been times where you have, and you've done. Oh, I really like that. But I generally my 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 consensus on this is that I generally think that people don't like being told what to do, and they'd rather discover it. That's my view. But I just want you to answer from a personal perspective. Your yeah, point of view. I think I think if you tell someone what to do, you kind of take away their free will a little bit. Um, but I think again, it depends on the context. If you're brand new to a job and you've got no idea what you're doing, then of course you're going to be told what to do because that's that's how you're going to survive in that environment. If you've done a job for fifteen years. And someone comes in and tells you how to do that job when you've been doing it pretty well, then that conversation is never going to tend to go well, right? You, you as the person coming in that may be a new manager or, or new supervisor would would need to assess that conversation in a, in a in a majorly different way, and perhaps help that person come to the conclusion you want them to without forcing it on them. Um, you know, we've all led teams you know, on this on this call. Some have more experience than others, um, but my experience of of being um, young, as you two like to mention, I managed a lot of people that are perhaps double my age, 20 years older than me. It's very hard for me to go in there and tell one of those people how to do something or what to do because that that isn't A, going to work, and B, comes across as disrespectful to their experience. So it's about helping them identify what you want them to identify. So that, that's where it comes from. Every, nobody likes being told what to do. Um, I'm sure people don't get parking fines or speeding fines and say you must pay this. And I'm sure I'm I'm sure nobody in the world loves paying those kind of things. Nobody loves being told to 
to i don't know go to a different shop or you know whatever no, I, I just think that's people want to live the life they wait the way they want to live it they don't want people to dictate to them how they should live their life whether that's professionally or personally or socially or whatever yeah lee what about you um, you touched on a couple of words there, Ryan, that I think are crucial to this. And again, there's different situations where they do and don't apply, but it's the what and the how. So there's being told what to do and there's being told how to do it. Um, but again, I think it, it changes differently. So at the moment, I'm doing a load of different DIY things in the house. Um, now, I know what I want to do. You know, I know that I want the room to end up like this. I want to put this door up here or I want to change the floor here. Now, if someone wandered in off the street and said to me, no, 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 what you want to do is this and this and this and this, I don't need a stranger telling me what I want my house to look like. I know what that is. Um, not that strangers do walk in and tell me that, by the way. It's a bit of an abstract example. However, how I make those things happen, some of them I know, some of them I've got no idea. So I'll go to trusty YouTube or I'll pick up the phone and phone my DIY helpline number, but by coincidence, it's the same phone number as my dad's phone number. And I'll say... This is what I want to do, but can you tell me how I do it? And I will welcome that, how to do it, to explain me through that situation, everything else like that. Similarly, there'll be situations, you, you know, Ryan touched on earlier work situation. Actually, you know, if I'm in a place of uncomfortable what my boundaries are and aren't for my role, I know that I'm going to be told what I need to do for the business within the role that I'm in. But what I don't really then want to be prescribed is how I then do it. I want to be like, well, here's your goal and I'll go off and I'll make that happen. And again, I might seek some advice. I might not, but I'll, I'll push that through. And I think that's a complete opposite where the what is something where actually it's comfortable to be defined because it's giving you some boundaries. You know what you've got to be going to. As long as you're working within those boundaries, you know you're working towards something to achieve. But I don't really want to be prescribed how to do it. I mean, that might be a personal thing. I thrive off of accountability. But then, like I said, there's personal situations where actually I want to be in control of the what, but I might need help with the how. And I guess in both those situations, it comes down to that either I'm asking for or I'm accepting the being told what to do, so to speak, Joe. I guess the, the bigger push button thing for a lot of people is probably when it's unsolicited or you yeah, might just be venting give, us, give us a little bit of context have you had that had that happen to you what unsolicited oh yeah. well, you know I, I think everyone has it happens in lots of different situations when you're people love their opinion so whatever you're doing some you know you can be talking to someone about something you're doing and there'll be a whole group of people who listen and nod and ask what you're doing but there'll be a whole you know whole host of personalities there who as soon as they gas onto what you're talking about they want to tell you how they would deal with that situation and what they would do with that and why their experience they've had is what you're going to go through and you get that kind of unsolicited and it's not even sometimes advice you're almost told by people well i've done this so you should do this and again back to earlier things you're not always asking for that i think there's times when you are and there's times when that's really useful and there's times when they're not, or there might be, you know, you might be in a situation where something's really winding you up and you know what you're going to do with it. You just want to blurt it out and get that frustration out. And you're not necessarily looking for an answer coming back. You just want someone to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can get it out of your system and become more constructive. And again, you get that bit where you're then told, well, this is how you fix your problem. And it, it doesn't always, sometimes it hits in the right way. And sometimes it doesn't, again, I suppose, depending whether you've opened that door for someone to, to give that instruction so i do mm. i do think that you know there's a lot of times when as as a group and a group i mean the six seven billion people on this planet are comfortable with a level of boundaries it's good to know where our boundaries start and end and they come through some instructional way but i think when that starts to narrow and narrow and narrow and you're getting the what to do when you're in your boundaries in your lane or you're in a place where you're experimenting i think that's where it can push on people's buttons sometimes yeah. what do you think joe your question do you like yeah, being told what to few, do? Few, yeah the thing is is because when you know as i said with leaders or when you're doing anything you know people ask you for advice that so you give the advice and they don't do anything they don't do it <laughs> they just don't do it they do something totally opposite or whatever and it might be because there's you know that you know they just like you said i think we need to be clear on 
when we ask for it and what we're doing because you know people don't like being told you i agree with you i absolutely 100 percent agree with you to be clear joe to be clear as we are having this conversation about you whether you like or don't like being told what to do is mm -hmm. your family in the room with you right now while this is happening yeah my daughter is watching this will be interesting <laughs> yes <laughs> um no nobody does do they i mean that's the thing that's what i've discovered throughout my life and even if people ask for advice they don't necessarily want the advice they're just like you said they may be just voicing and they don't want a solution right and i found a lot of my daughters uh, i just want you to listen i don't need advice so you know and that's the thing and i think because when you're listening to it your ultimate reaction is that we're like problem solvers we want to try and solve or help people and we naturally fall into them, but we've got to be mindful of that and I think that's another thing that we've got to be mindful of the person asking us what it is but actually do we do we just need to listen and just let them unless they actually ask and say i really really do want you to tell me something you know do we do it but i, I would always the thing i've learned from this is the coaching thing i really like is to not to advise people although i still fall into the trap of doing it <laughs> and, I, and i don't want to and it's really difficult not to try and do that when someone's giving you a problem i don't know how you find that guys but i find that difficult Oh, it is. And I think both sides, you know, the person who doesn't want the advice is, you know, they're coming, they're, it's an instinctive place coming from a good place. And the person trying to give the advice is also coming from a good place. You're just uh, at that moment in time, you're at cross purposes is all I think. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And because, because like people say, oh, do you know, what? I've really had this problem. I don't know what to do. But it's not necessarily asking you to solve it. They're just, like you said, voicing it out. And there's a couple of things, actually. There's a, there's, um, a couple of things that I... um. That, that, that work coaching is one because that's self-discovery and you mentioned youtube which is brilliant in fact i'm playing tennis and i've been looking up how to hit you know a full hand more effectively right and i know I, I feel a lot better by, by by watching this video than someone almost like telling me what to do and, he, and even now when i know what someone's trying to do when they tell me what to do, i feel a little bit of resistance and i'm really oh, why am i feeling this resistance I, they're, they're really trying to help me but there's some resistance and I can't quite explain it. And this is why there's definitely a thing about we don't, we talk, we want to discover things. And there's this guy called Ray Dalio and I've mentioned him before on the podcast. And he talks about weighted advice. And, it, and I think it also depends on who's giving you advice and what their experience is, and where they sit. So Ray Dalio always talks about, you know, that he had in his company, he had, he had like Trump cards he gave out to his staff and where their level of knowledge was. And whether they could, you know, what, what sort of advice they're giving in certain areas. And he found even with those cards that people were giving advice in areas that they did not have as much as expertise. And I'll give you a case in point. I spoke to a, a friend of mine and this person was, was having, was struggling with relationships. And this person who was giving them advice on relationships did not have successful relationships. <laughs> And I think this is where it comes from. We want to actually help. And like when I said, when I said, oh, this person in relationships, what was their relationships like? They weren't very good. And they said, yeah, you're right. This person gave me advice, but they didn't have good relationships themselves. So this is what Ray Dalio talks about, you know, looking at those types of things. Again, when I'm playing tennis, I'm, you know, sometimes, you know, you might get advice from people that aren't necessarily great at tennis, but they're telling you to do it this particular way. And I think that comes from experience. I'm not saying if you're the best player, but let's say, for instance, you know, Roger Federer comes up to me and say, hey, you want to hit the forehand this way? I'm more inclined to listen to that type of advice than someone maybe at a different level that isn't quite as good, right? And it's just all examples. Anyway. This is examples what I'm talking about. And um, so I'm really taking that Ray Dalio advice to hand is that I think we need to sort of maybe, you know, look at where the advice has come from and where that person sits in terms of expertise and whether, you know, whether we think, and I think some of that resistance comes from whether we think as they're qualified to give us that advice. And I think we're not going to tell them that. <laughs> I'm never going to say, well, I'm not having advice because you've, you know, but we've got to, I think, how can we be clear on the message about when we do want help and how we can get it or whether we need to say, hey, I just want to say, I just want to use this as a voicing platform. I don't want you to solve this problem. I just want you to, I want to just listen to this problem that I've got. Um, and again, self-discovery through coaching, I think is a big, big thing on this. But is there any other thoughts on, why you maybe put that's that was my my thing on it i still feel resistance do you feel do you guys feel resistance when you're being told what to do and, and again i think ryan you had a good point on you know maybe like someone who's an older generation in a team i had that challenge and you know i had this younger person trying to help you know a more mature person and there was a lot of conflict there because of the age and i don't and i had to deal with that and i didn't realize that as a leader and i, I had to rectify that but that was really challenging but is, is there that anything person me, Joe? wasn't you 
Oh, it wasn't I mean, we had a similar situation many we years ago. We did, though. But, oh, oh yeah. we do now. Oh, yes, but there's still been two. You've just reminded me, actually. Yeah. I won't mention that. I don't know. I think we got to... You did come to me with that, that, actually, didn't you? We, yeah. We had that many, well, probably 20 years ago now. Yeah. I actually remember the person now you're talking about, yeah. So, what? yeah, tell, talk to you about that. What, you know, what what was going on? What did you think, now you reflect back on your, your experience looking back what do you think was a main driver behind that resistance do you think and and how you felt maybe as, as the person receiving that sort of i think i mean for me it's i mean i was like what was i 20 21 at the time so in, in the nicest um, way to myself i had no idea what i was doing right now and i think it was probably in a place that i knew i had the knowledge or at least i hope i had the knowledge <laughs> well you did i put you in a position where you, i thought you had the knowledge so you did and i think because of the the age thing they it, it shut a door straight away and i I don't know that I necessarily had the experience at the time to uh, so soften that. I guess I hit it more head on in the well. I'm going to prove to you I know it. That isn't necessarily the right way to. I don't. I don't really remember all of it now. If I'm totally honest, Joe. But I think that I'm going to presume that's probably more of a thing I did rather than you know I, I took it from a factual perspective rather than the behavioural one because I don't think I really had a even a clue that behavioural stuff even existed back then. Mm. Yeah. And it just shows you, I think, I think there can be those, uh, what do you call it? Um, unconscious, you know, where this young person's not going to tell me what to do and all that sort of thing that we maybe got hidden and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, the other, and, and again, and I, and I remember this in, in the team where I did actually have the person, you know, the more mature person come up to me and say, you know, I don't, I don't like this. I'm being told. And they come up to me and talk to me about it. It wasn't your one, Lee, though. This one, this was a different one. And I had to diffuse it. I said, I said you know, I had to, you know, diffuse it and say, you know, and, and they weren't. And it isn't that this person was experienced either. This this more mature person was not experienced. Probably, I would say probably actually a little bit older than I am right now. Um, and it was a ch challenging time. Um, but the way we got around it was just, you know, that just had to explain the intention and the clarity, more clarity around why this was happening. Um, and actually, it had to come from me, I think, as the leader um, to, to to rectify it. But yeah, it's always challenging. And but even now, and I was saying to you guys before, you know, even now, I still find a little bit resistance when I'm being told what to do. And I'm trying to lessen that because I'm trying to think this is intentions given. But then, when I'm getting that advice, I'm thinking this is a personal, very personal thing. I might ask for advice, but when I get the advice, I don't think it's quite right. It doesn't feel right. And I'm a very, I'm a very feeling person. Um, and when that happens, I'm thinking this is just doesn't quite sit right with me. Um, and sometimes I feel that, um, but I don't know what, I'm just throwing that over to you guys. What, is there anything that you can draw on from any of that? I've given you a sec there, Ryan. You look like you were leaning in. No, I thought, I thought I had, but no, I don't think so. Cause I you think... talked about, go on. Okay. No, go on. I'm going to say it's like, like a lot of it. It's the consciousness thing about it, isn't it? Cause it's not just how can I get people to, how can I be with people, you know, to make sure that I don't cross that line or anything, but how do you respond when people are giving you advice? And are you shutting down for the right reasons or the wrong reasons? Is there something to listen to? If you've got to be careful how you present, how you're talking to not unknowingly invite it in. Can you just politely nod and smile and then walk away and not necessarily do it? But is, it is, 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 there a, is there a bit of scope, though, to actually say to the person somehow that, that's not landing and should we be giving feedback and saying i've asked his advice but should we give feedback that it doesn't sit right or would that be a bit disrespectful once you've asked for it to say do you know what thanks for that but i'm not gonna do it. <laughs> i'm not gonna do it do we need to be a bit more honest and brutal i don't know i'm just putting it out there because no, no I, I think because because i've not done it if i've not done it and then they see i've not done it and their intention was good. That's not going to make them feel great. So go on, go on, Ryan. Sorry, I've interrupted. No, I think I think um, advice isn't asking for advice isn't an admission to doing what that person suggests. It's asking for an opinion to help you formulate your own plan or your own decision on the best way to proceed with something. It might be that somebody's advice doesn't fit specifically in your situation, but does give an overview situation that helps you develop your own decision that moves you moves you, you know, away from where you were. Just because you ask for advice doesn't mean you have to take it. And it's also worth, if you're worried about things like that, telling telling the people that you're asking advice, asking the advice of, that you're talking to a few people and you're just looking for a consensus from, from, from everyone. 
you don't have to justify your decisions to anyone, even in a professional or a friend like capacity, because good peers and good friends will understand the decisions you make, if, especially if not if you justify them, but especially if you can explain why you've made that decision. I suppose that is justifying, I guess, but justifying makes it seem like a um, demeaning phrase. But if you can explain why you've made the decision you have and, and perhaps you sought good opportunities out of their suggestion, but for your situation, X, Y, Z affected it and therefore you decided to go this way, it is what it is, right? Um, if Lee came to me and said, what car should I buy? And I said, a Ferrari, and he then rolls up in a Fiat, I'm not going to go, idiot, why did you not buy a Ferrari? Because there are other things at play that may, that obviously in this scenario, would affect his ability to buy a Ferrari. Yeah. You know what I mean? I get, yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah, so what car should I buy? Yeah, I get that. And There's many reasons say... as I roll up in whatever car that Ryan might just say idiot when he sees me, but at least one of them won't be because I didn't listen to his advice. Usually it's because <laughs> he tries to run me over. <laughs> God, this father and son relationship's getting more uh, gritty by the day, I think, you know? It's like an episode you know I mean? of Hollyoaks. So I suppose, Ryan, would you would you be happy with Lee telling you what to do? Would you do it? This is the other and son. this is this is the other side of the of the situation. I'm more inclined to listen to if Lee told me to do something than somebody else because I respect him. Mm. And I'd like to think having that level of respect gives people more ground more push when not demanding things of others but seeking things out of other people if your random tennis coach in your example said hit your forehand this way and you feel that resistance but when roger federer says it you don't get that resistance well i would definitely not feel the resistance <laughs> what's the you know outside of the fact that one's a 22 time grand slam winner or whatever it is what what are the differences between these two people and it will be that you don't really know this coach. But you you feel like you know Roger Federer because you respect him because of the game that he plays and the way that he plays it. So that has, to me, that has a huge drive. If I had a new, you know, if I had a new boss come in that was younger than me and started telling me what to do, I would struggle with that. But if, mm. if Lee came in and became my boss and told me what to do, I wouldn't struggle as much with that. And it isn't because of age, but it's because I know Lee, I've worked with him and I, a, trust the decisions that he makes, and B, I know that I can respect him. And as a bracketed C answer to that, if you, if you in a professional context are able to speak freely with these people, this person, and challenge in the right way, then if they tell you what to do or how, or how to do something, you're well within your right to challenge and say, understand where you're coming from do you not think that this approach might be better and knowing lee when we've had these conversations before he'll go yeah good idea thought of that but x exists so you can't do that or he'll go actually that's a good idea do that and having had these conversations again the same example with lee before i know how that works but because you know how someone runs or how someone kind of does what they do and because you respect them in that way you are more open to taking those instructions if you like from them so maybe we should be mindful of who we do ask advice of and that there's got to be an element it's there must it's be more respect and trust built right it's more who than how they ask if you're if your wife told you how to do something you're more likely to don't, go don't go to this don't, just don't go to this ground you're more likely to <laughs> do it we go to this ground you're more likely to do right it now listening to this Ryan you're more likely to do it than you Got are a spoon in her hand <laughs> if a random if a random a person was to ask you while right? we whilst we're on the subject can we just ask joe when you were last asked to cut the grass and if you did so all right let me just ask the question come on when, when, go ask, ask the question again, Lee. If my wife is listening. When was Joe last asked to cut the grass, and did he happily skip out to do it? In the weekend, he did. Yeah. Oh, look at you, Come Joe. on. So you only. Well, I must say, I did feel resistance. But that, praise that, as well. Look that, that resistance in this live example, that resistance, you push through it. A because of the relationship, but B, because you respect 
you respect the woman that you live with, right? I bloody but well do. It, that is the correct answer. But if you're, if, <laughs> if for whatever <laughs> reason your neighbour looked over your fence and went, "Cord Joe, your bloody grass needs cutting," you'd go piss off. <laughs> Do you know what? It's so funny you saying that, right? You've reminded me of something. We're, not, we're in our house, right? And there's some neighbours, bless them, bless their souls. They're lovely. They were lovely. They've gone now. But we, you know, we'd not cut the grass for a while. But they'd come over and they'd try. This is like advice that's like given, but it's not a given, if you know what I mean. And they come over, they're not to the door. And, and, and my wife will, will attest to this. They said, they come on, I said, oh, how are you doing? They said, we're doing good. I said, oh, they said, um, have you been away looking at our grass? <laughs> you've been away oh, we've not been away right so <laughs> there's another way like we know what they say you need to cut your grass and Passive, immediately <laughs> words, i think joe but that resistance exactly. that resistance is yeah. so much bigger than if if your wife were to ask you to do it right 100 so it's because yeah. it's because of the relationship dynamic yeah as well as knowing where your bread's buttered of course and, but, and it's happy happy life happy wife right right happy wife happy life yeah, that way around that's it i think it's that way around but it, even if you even if you take the even if you take the wife husband aspect out of it if it yeah. was if you were living with a sibling you'd be more you'd be more content with saying them saying to you you agreed to cut the grass this weekend get out there and do it then again your neighbor leaning over your fence and going your grass looks terrible cut it your that resistance level is, <laughs> yeah. is so different yeah yeah i get that i totally get that um i just want to give out a sound shout out to digby dodd for uh, saying hi hi digby another regular to the live so thank you for uh, coming i really appreciate you thank you so much dig digby dodd for joining and sending likes look at that it's fantastic um but yeah i i really love this conversation because you know i want to understand i i, I feel this is more and actually well, should i be asking your advice or should i be trying to self-discover i i'm a more self-discovery person but i will advise especially on diy and things like that i do defer to more expert teams. yeah I, I never really posed an opinion on that i'm more i am more self-discovery but if i if I'm unsure of the what or the how, as Lee kind of described, then I would mm. seek further clarification. I don't know, yeah, that sounds really... You, it's when you ask for it, you know, when you invite it in. But I think also it's how comfortable you are with how, you know, what, as we like to feel in control. And I think that being told what can do can push on it. And I think the more in control you feel you're made to feel, the less that instinct to push back kicks in and i think that's a that's a, a big big part of it as well i mean i don't know who this lead you speak of ryan is but he sounds fantastic so <laughs> he left a, he left guy to look up to he left me he, about, gone? he left he... me about nine months ago to go and pursue other things so, so i'm sure that, he's much that, happier so, now much so happier. can i just can i just clarify so that lee was not your dad this lee is your dad no, both Lees were my dad. It's just oh, so you got two Lees that your dad, right? That gets even more complicated. The Lee, the Lee nine Lee months, the Lee nine months ago hadn't had a haircut for three years. Oh. Whereas this, whereas oh. this Lee, this Lee has. Looks so like people much. go back to the um, episodes in the podcast. Lee's going to do a shilling, but go back to early episodes where you'll see Lee with his long hair, with his footballer type headband on the video, which is quite interesting to see. Head over to inspirationnation.org.uk, links to the full archive there, and you can go back and you can see me probably around about, what, episode 150, 160, something like that. It will look fantastic. You'll yeah. love it. And, of course, this while one... you're there, pick yourself mm. up a mug or a T-shirt or tote bag, whatever else there is, loads of stuff, Inspiration Nation merchandise, logo slapped all over it, supports us, supports what we're doing. We massively appreciate it. There we go. Joe's just got his face mask out. As I've padded for time, that is inspirationnation.org.uk. Um, I was just going to say as well, just to round off very quick, Joe, I've been doing some stuff I thought you'd like. So the, the, the kind of structure within which I'm working at the moment is made, based much more on a a team mentality than a traditional kind of hierarchy structure type thing so a lot of the skills you know people that get on in this from what i've been looking at and a lot of the skills they teach you are around um like persuasive influencing how you positively influence those around you but you receive that back as well where it's not you know there isn't a traditional chain of command but you are working as a team and the better you work as a team the better your team your team does and there's a there's a lot of like behavioral psychologists on some of these training who talk about you know the old older style command control which they were quick to caveat and said is a way of working that worked for years and years and years so this shouldn't be dismissed but about more modern inclusive ways of doing things even touched on the fact that you know 
the army is a big believer in this sort of thing now, which you think would be a lot more kind of traditional, just follow your instructions. And like, like everything, it's 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 how secure people feel and it's how good people are at gaining buy-in from people and you know, focusing on those those skills. And I think as much as Joe, like you said, the instinct is there to not like to be told what to do, the way in which that is received can be has a massive difference on it and it's just it's, you know I, I watched a couple of webinars in the last week on that sort of subject yeah i love that and i, I think you're right but i suppose it depends on the situation doesn't it you know whether it's Very command so, control yeah. situation depends on what you're facing what approach you take and again, my philosophy is very much of a coaching approach, you know, where people have, if they have the knowledge is about that, trying to get them to self-discover and find different Absolutely. ways of getting there. I think that's just such a powerful thing. But there are moments when we just have to get it done. And this is what needs to happen. There are moments of that as well. So I think as people, we just need to be open to having all of it, right? We have to be open to it. And uh, so, yeah, I just uh, I just want to get your views on it because so, I, I, I do feel I do feel there's a lot of resistance to me and I feel there's resistance in other people. And that's why I think coaching works so well. And that's my Absolutely. big takeaway, really. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's, it's that, isn't it? It's the different. Back to your first question. I think it's situational. And I think mm. most of the times people mm. don't like it. Sometimes there is comfort derived from it, but it's, it's being conscious of it and being conscious how you are with other people as well. And also, no, I think like being bar having orders barked at them, or particularly barking orders, and. Well, I think you've got to take them both in. It's got to be the receiver and you know person asking. So receiver and the person you know receive and receiver or whatever you want to call it. I think You're both parties. That words now. Part, yeah, I am. Both parties have to be have to be conscious, don't you? Whether you're asking or whether you know you're giving, how should we approach that and really be conscious of? like you said, Lee and Ryan, the situation and everything's that apply. I don't think we probably, when we give advice, we probably don't think enough about that. Where is this an advice moment? Is it not an advice moment? Is it, a, I usually, I usually try and wait for people to, if I'm coaching to actually ask me and I say to make sure to ask, me, Oh, what do you think? You know, or, you know, I want them to, to open up the way that there, there is, because I, I want to resist, you know, to give advice, resist it as much as possible. That's what I'm aiming for. Um, and that's what I always will always do in coaching. I'll be, I call it the nuclear bomb of coaching where you tell people to do that. That is not coaching and you're not coaching no, at that point. Right. Um, but yeah, I love this conversation. I think there's been a few situations, but yeah, is there's there anything some great advice? stuff there, Joe. Yeah. There's some great advice. And I think that, you know, to lead into the takeaways, that response of what do you think is my big takeaway from this. I think that's such a powerful thing to use to help, help people find their own answers because like you said we are we do you know self-discovery finding our own way making our mistakes that's all human nature stuff you can't you can't be told experience you have to experience experience but yes. that doesn't mean you can't be there to support and guide people on the way and what do you think i think is key so that is my that is my takeaway for this week ryan what is on your takeaway for this week um we didn't talk overly much about this but my takeaway is be careful how you phrase things because you can come across in the same way. Yeah. I think that's very good. Yeah, it's very good. And Jose? As I said, mine is about, my, my, my is, is the coaching approach, is the situations, what you said about, is about that moment. And actually when I'm thinking about, you know, my, my daughters and things like that is that, you know, you, you said, you, you have, even though you have to let people experience things, that's the only way really sometimes we're going to learn that that thing even though do it in a in a safer environment so they can learn and then move on um so for me it's to really hold back on the advice unless it's absolutely necessary like do not advise <laughs> at all unless it's absolutely you know unless they really 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 want it but read the room read the situation and that's mine fantastic stuff well i think all that's left for me to do is count us down we'll be back again next week everyone thank you for supporting leave us a review hit subscribe tell friends and family and of course, don't forget to check us out on TikTok live every Tuesday. Just follow Joe, J Noya underscore Inspiration Nation over on TikTok as well. Three, two, one. Inspiration, Inspiration Nation. Catch you guys later. Catch you guys, Catch you guys, guys later. later. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this Inspiration Nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another videos go live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me 
because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.